2020 is off to a rocky start, to say the least. You know, I stubbed my toe getting into the bathroom on New Year's Day. Tom Brady isn't going to be in the Super Bowl. And I mean, that's really sad because that means that the metaphoric version of the American empire is collapsing. And arguably so is the real one, right? The New England Patriots' loss to the Tennessee Titans could mean the death of patriotism and a shocking reality that the South might rise again. Oh, and America actually committed a pretty blatant war crime on Friday, January 3rd. One of Iran's most beloved and powerful political and military figures, General Qasem Soleimani, was assassinated by the Trump administration in a drone airstrike at a civilian airport in Baghdad. This airstrike also killed nine Iraqi nationals who were also on that plane. As Mint Press News reported, assassinating a world leader like General Salem Soleimani of Iran without provocation is an international war crime. But Pompeo and the Trump administration would have you believe that they had all the provocation they need. Pompeo claimed that General Soleimani was planning an attack on the American people and personnel. When asked what evidence he had for this claim, the response was very similar to the WMDs of Iraq back in 2002. You know, there's proof, but you but you have to like squint your eye, but like not don't squint your eyes like all the way, like third like a 38.2% squint and then like tilt your tilt your head like slightly slightly pass when you feel like a little pinch down your spinal column and then look west but like not all the way westward like kind of like south-ish north westward and then lean back just like a little bit just like not just like a little and then you can see it and then you can see the attacks that general Soleimani was planning the state department's evidence is about as interpretive as a jackson pollock painting in fact pollock's painting are a lot more straightforward and evident of drug use. Whereas with the State Department, you can't really tell what drugs they're using, but you know that it's a mixer, mix of uppers and probably also bath salts and doing LSD the wrong way. These people give interpretive drug use a bad name. The truth about this attack was that General Qassam Soleimani was on a peace negotiation with Iraq. As the Grey Zone reported, Iraq wanted to have peace talks between Saudi Arabia and Iran, and General Soleimani was there to discuss these talks. In fact, the Prime Minister of Iran called Trump about these peace talks, and Trump praised him for it, and then drone bombed one of the top officials of the Iranian government as a reward, maybe? Maybe he wanted to congratulate the Prime Minister, and instead of saying, get them a bouquet of daisies, he said, drone bomb the shit out of them. Common mistake. It's a common mistake for anybody going through the er early stages of senility and dementia. And let's be honest about drone warfare. It's just as bad as troops on the ground. All drone warfare does is gamify actual warfare. I bet some drone pilot received a high score reward for this. Instead of a purple heart, they got a Star Fox patch and a framed photo of whoever the main character from Medal of Honor is. Pompeo, Bolton, and the CEOs of the war profiteering corporations fear peace in the Middle East. That means that they don't get to play both sides and reap all the rewards of bloodshed. The fear of peace is evident in the way Pompeo reacted after the assassination. He claimed that American lives everywhere, including Iran and Iraq, are safe. But all Americans should evacuate immediately for safety. Why would they leave if they're safe? I mean, wouldn't it have been better and more beneficial to your lie if you just told all Americans to wear like a Groucho Mark-esque disguise and stay put? Everything is fine. Just speak with an accent that you're good at, at the, which is like not an American one, though. The whole world's mouth is agape at this blatant war crime that was committed by the American presidency. 
Germany is calling this a dangerous point of escalation. And and the Germans are, are very familiar with all dangerous points of escalations. Okay, they used to be the master race of escalators. That's the only thing they became a master race of. That and a uh, very efficient porn. China wants both sides to de-escalate, which didn't really happen. Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Khamenei vowed revenge and then attacked two U.S. bases in Iraq as an act of retaliation. More on that shortly. Trump decided that he threatened to destroy historic and religious areas if Iran threatened to attack America again. What's next, a Yo Mama So Fat contest with ballistic missiles and drone warfare? It's astounding that the leaders of two large countries have the emotional maturity of schoolyard children. Russia says that killing Soleimani was illegal. Cue all the neoliberal media outlets to reignite Russia Gate in three, two, and now. In a Radio Free Europe interview, Jonathan Katz, a senior fellow at the German Marshall Fund, a neoliberal think tank, said that the real winner of this war will be Russia. If they help de-escalate Iran, they bolster their profile to the West. They've been trying to get back into the G8 since they were kicked out for attacking and annexing Crimea in Ukraine. Katz claims that they're opportunistic, and this is their opportunity to rejoin the West as a prominent figure. Now, I'm waiting for the media to start overusing the word collusion and quid pro quo again so that they can say Putin told Trump to do this so they can broker peace and become a world power and then communist our babies. Reminder, Russia is a capitalist country. Second reminder, McCarthyism is just as bad, if not worse, today than it was in the 50s. Now, the corporate mainstream warmongering media is once again fawning over Trump's actions to illegally assassinate this world leader and take steps to push us into another war. CNN called this airstrike precise targeting. Yes, it's very precise to not just kill your target, but also nine other Iraqi officials and decimate a civilian airport. CNN has become so anti-intellectual, they think scorching the earth with a drone-based airstrike is precision. I bet they think book burnings are a proof of a nation's high literacy rate. The Washington Examiner said that this assassination was more important than bin Laden's death. And depending on who you're talking to, this is true. If you're talking to warmongers and sociopaths like Mike Pompeo, John Bolton, Donald Rumsfeld, Hillary Clinton, then yes, this is more important than bin Laden's death because the assassination of Soleimani might actually give them a war with Iran that they have been itching for for over 30 years. For everyone else, this is a new nightmare we have to live with as our friends and loved ones are sent to go fight rich men's wars for resources again. Of course, Fox News praised Trump for his actions, but they usually praise him for his morning bowel movement, so that's not much of a surprise there. CNBC, on the other hand, said that the Trump administration just took out the world's number one bad guy. The number one bad guy in the world. So let's see if this accusation levied by CNBC is actually true or if this is all part of the same false narrative woven by the State Department and their war hawks. General Qasem Soleimani was one of the most respected and beloved figures in Iran. He's like what Tom Brady is to the New England area. Back in the 90s, Soleimani led the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Force, or the IRGC, to battle against Saddam Hussein. At that time, Hussein was being funded and armed by the United States. Lest we forget the damning photographs of Donald Rumsfeld shaking hands with Hussein in the early 90s. Hussein killed over a million Iranians, and Rumsfeld was gleefully eating dinner with a new business associate. Soleimani is also the leader of the IRGC's Quds Force. 
they're like the New England Patriots of the Middle Eastern Special Forces. Lots of wins and a lot of blood on their hands. The Quds Force is responsible for pushing back Saudi Arabia's Wahhabi-led terror groups and ISIS in Syria. In fact, when Mosul was being attacked in 2014, it was Soleimani and the Quds Force that was responsible for the defeat of ISIS. And in terms of fighting Wahhabism, they've been battling Al-Qaeda and the Taliban in that region as well. And lest we forget, the Saudis are like America's second best friend in the region. Trump just sold them a shit ton of weapons, or as it's properly known, the Empire's Friendship Bracelet. Now, by no means am I saying Soleimani is the bright shining star of the Middle East. The Quds Force is very anti-Israel to the level that they don't believe that Jews should have their own state. Quds means Jerusalem and they believe that Palestine should be in control of that region. They've also supported and assisted their proxies like Hamas and Hezbollah to wage terror in that region as well. As Kim Iverson points out, Iran has always had three goals. Eliminate Western influences, anti-Israelism, and prevent Saudi-led Wahhabism. This is why they're America's enemies. They want to be their own country and in charge of their own resources, ideologies, and trade. They aren't because of Western sanctions and influences. Iran just discovered an additional 50 billion barrels of oil, putting their full capacity at 150 barrels. America wants all of it. Through war and selling weapons to both sides, the U.S. and its proxies want to control the region's resources and create the United States of the Middle East, plus Israel and Saudi Arabia. So, back to the initial question we had a few minutes ago. Is General Soleimani the number one bad guy of the region. I'd say he's a complicated figure that's done a lot of bad things, to put it lightly. Soleimani has a lot of American, Israeli, and even Palestinian blood on his hands. But the number one bad guy in the Middle East is the American war economy. They profit off bloodshed from all sides. They sell American weapons to anyone with a checkbook. Which is weird. Who's, who's taking checks these days? Now, as the recording of this podcast, Iran did attack two U.S. military bases in Iraq. The foreign minister of Iran, Javad Safir, said Iran took and concluded proportionate measures in self-defense under Article 51 of U.N. Charter, targeting base from which cowardly armed attack against our citizens and senior officials were launched. We do not seek escalation of war but will defend ourselves against any aggression. Publications like the USA Today state that, state that this is an act of war, ignoring the fact that America had no provocation to attack Soleimani's plane in a civilian airport. But these escalations have been a long time common. The United States has been acting as an irritant to Iran as in order to provoke them in an attack for a long time. In recent years alone, Trump pulled out of the nuclear deal and imposed economic sanctions on them in 2018. Then in 2019, they claimed that Iran attacked a Japanese oil tanker after the Iranians shot down an American surveillance drone. And now, here we are. Right? This is like the international affairs version of stop punching yourself. Instead of that, it's 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 stop provocating war on yourself. Stop provocating war on yourself. Stop provocating war on yourself. And an escalated action by Trump also makes sense, considering the impeachment charade. The only time both the Democrats and the Republicans and all of the media have called him presidential is when he used military force against the country. They cheered him on when he used the mother of all bombs in Afghanistan and when he called an airstrike on a Syrian airfield. So if the impeachment means that he's not presidential then he does the one thing that'll prove that he is manufacture consent for a war on false xenophobic reasons with no evidence. Trump did say that he won't further escalate attacks uh, in the region, which is a good thing. But he's going to slap further economic sanctions, which gets the supreme leader of Iran to keep chanting his favorite anti-American slogans. 
doesn't mean they won't continue to try and manufacture more consent for war by being an irritant to Iran. By pretending like America didn't do anything wrong in the situation, doesn't get away from the prospects of war, it just delays it. And if there's anyone out there that is saying, well, having a Democrat in the Oval Office would have made a difference, they're wrong. Barack Obama increased drone warfare in the Middle East. This was this program killed civilians, including Americans. Clinton started proxy wars in Somalia and Eastern Europe. Hillary Clinton was itching at this war just as much as Pompeo and Bolton. And Joe Biden isn't criticizing the administration on an act of war, but rather the execution of it. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard is one of the few presidential candidates that has spoken out against wars like this since the start of her campaign and even before. Gabbard had a bill about ensuring that a Congress would have to approve acts of war. Nobody wanted to sign it or co-sponsor it. Bernie Sanders, working with Ro Khanna, has a bill in the Senate that would restrict military funding for offensive actions unless it was approved by Congress. That's two out of 188 Democratic candidates that would stand up against the military-industrial complex and the American war economy. And those two candidates are viscerally hated by the Democratic Party. So again, no, a Democrat in office wouldn't mean less wars. Both parties are the war party and the legislative wing of the American war economy. In tandem with the corporate media, which is the propaganda wing of the American war economy, they would push this country into another war in the Middle East. This only further complicates things in the region and sends us into even more shades of gray. More importantly, it sends more of the middle class to fight for rich people in their wars. And at this point in our history, we don't need more brothers and sisters in arms. We need more brothers and sisters in peace. I will be on tour across the country in 2020. If you want to check out my entire tour schedule, please go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. On January 17th, I'm going to be coming to Caffeine Underground in Brooklyn, New York. Very rare performance. I don't perform very often in New York City, so this will be uh, this will kind of be a rare performance in New York City. Uh, January 24th, I'll be at La Castaneda in Lancaster, Pennsylvania for Lank Out Loud Comedy. On January 25th and 26th, I will be opening for Lee Camp at the Ruba Club in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We just added a second show. Tickets are available for that second show now. January 29th, I'm at the 7.30 Tavern in Boston, Massachusetts with Anderson Comedy. January 31st, I'm at the Apohattian Theater in Portland, Maine. February 7th, I'm at the Marquee Theater in Middlebury, Vermont. February 8th, I'm at the Revelry Theater in Burlington, Vermont. February 9th, the Woolen Mill Comedy Club in Bridgewater, Vermont. February 10th, I'm at the Skinny Pancake in Burlington, Vermont. February 11th, I'm at the Boulder Coffee in Rochester, New York. And on February 15th, I will be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Third Street Gallery for a super special show. Again, for my entire tour schedule, go to my website, ramendoodlescomedy.com. That's R A. M A N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, if you would like to and can financially support this show, there are a couple different ways to do so. One would be to become a patron over at patreon.com slash Krishmohanhaha. The other way would be to support this podcast directly through anchor.fm. If you go to anchor.fm and on this podcast page, there will be a option to donate to it and become a sustaining member of this podcast. If you click that, it'll give you some options. Uh, and that's another way you can help. You can also make one-time donations via PayPal. Uh, and you can also sign up for our email list to get updates either on a monthly or weekly basis. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. Uh, and to all the people that have already subscribed, liked, shared, uh, and become patrons. Thank you so much. It is very much appreciated. Every little bit helps to the people that are thinking about it. Uh, I hope you guys become patrons. I hope you guys think that this this content is 
worth it. Um, and, uh, and I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate you guys sharing. I appreciate you guys giving your time uh, to this podcast. 